Hi there and a huge warm welcome back to the Mystical Realms podcast with me Laura Dalligan. As always I hope you're super well and that you're enjoying the run-up to the festive season whether you celebrate Yule, Solstice, Christmas or nothing at all. Whatever's going on for you it is midwinter. We are approaching the time of the winter solstice and that is when the sun is at its weakest and we have the longest night. And in these times of darkness where we wait for the sun to be reborn and for the power of the light to gain strength again, we deal a lot with the energies of darkness and we deal a lot with the energies of misrule and maybe chaos. And in this podcast, we're going to be talking about one of the characters that really sums up and represents some of these energies, and that is Krampus. Now, in modern times, Krampus has enjoyed quite a good revival. There's even a film about him, a horror movie, which I have not watched. I do not watch horror movies. I am a wuss. So there is the Krampus runs that not only are going on in their native Austria, but are also spreading about all over the world. We have them in England now as well. Um, I think there's one in Whitby that I really want to go to in, in Yorkshire, Whitby, the town of Dracula. And in America and in other places, Krampus runs are popping up, which I think is a fabulous thing. But the idea of Krampus can seem terrifying, strange, bizarre, maybe scary and creepy for some people. But that's because the whole myth and stories of these creatures has got a little bit mixed up and mashed up over the years. So really, when we're looking at the idea of Krampus, we can look at two eras, the pagan era and the Christian era or the post-pagan era. And we are looking then at different energies and like a lot of pagan beliefs that could not be eradicated by the overtaking religious path for Christianity um, here in Europe, these creatures were brought in and modified and brought into the folklore and the, the, the stories of Christianity. So that now we see St. Nicholas in some parts of, of Europe, St. Nicholas with his counterpart, Krampus, playing really good cop, bad cop. St. Nicholas will be rewarding the children and giving them presents and toys and treats if they've been good. Whereas Krampus in his full terrifying goat-like monstrous form, though goats aren't monstrous, goats are amazing, um, will be punishing the children, terrifying the children, not only giving them a lump of coal, but also potentially taking their sorry butts to hell. Also, there's some more grotesque and gruesome um, stories of what happens to naughty children. And the, the idea of Krampus has a basket on his back and he takes those naughty children and he takes them away to hell. Of course, hell's a Christian concept in the way that it's seen in this story, not the Norse hell, but the Christian hell is a place where you don't want to go to. And yet Krampus is without a doubt a pre-Christian figure. So where are the roots of Krampus? Why does he go around punishing naughty children? And why does he look like a monstrous goat? Well, maybe let's start with the goat thing, shall we? Um, poor old goats. They don't have a great time of it, do they? Uh, <laughs> they're... Anyway, goats and goat-like creatures are a common thing in pagan mythology from Greece to England to all over. So where there's goats representing the wild and the fecundity of nature and the strength and determination and the sexiness of life as well. Not saying I think goats are sexy, just that they represent the sexual energy of life. That uh, Pan is for one you can think of there and the satires. And here in U the UK, we have more stag-like creatures uh, like Kununas, who is a Celtic deity of the wilds and often is seen as half man, half stag. 
And then we have also um, Gwynep Neath, who is often seen as antlered or representing at the very least the wild aspects and also the, the masculine energy. And then we have Hearn the Hunter, which is a later uh, story, very similar to Caninos, but linked to um, the UK and to a particular oak, actually, Hearn's Oak. But what I'm just saying here is that it's quite a common theme to have animal deities, goats or stag-like deities that represent nature and the wild. And what we know about nature and the wild is it ain't always pretty. It's not always about 100% flowers and uh, sweetness. That's some part of the year. It really isn't the winter part of the year, though, is it? (laughs) You know, the winter part of the year is about decay and endings and cold. And it's about those dark nights where the shadows seem to dance and we don't know when the sun's coming back again or we feel like it's forever in darkness and our energy might feel quite low. And in those dark nights, we tell stories, we tell tales and we explore those deeper and darker parts of ourselves not everything can be light we need the shadow as well and I think that's something that is very much missing or has been missing from a lot of modern spirituality and life and I think that's also why Krampus has enjoyed quite a big revival we need the balance we need the wild the misrule as well as the sparkly and the jolly so back to goats (laughs) Um, yeah, there's plenty of goat-like deities that represent, I like to say the word fecundity, I'm going to use it a lot, uh, life, nature. And they can be mischievous, they can be playful, they can be naughty, they can be dark, they can be bright. Nothing in, well, very few things in paganism and in the natural world are purely good or purely evil. Some things are, but very few things are. They often represent duality and they often represent the holistic energy of life. So if we go back to the pre-Christian idea of Krampus, well, he wasn't called Krampus, I don't think. He might have been, but it seems more likely that he would have been called Um, or linked to the local nature spirits so Krampus is more of an alpine region being creature which is Austria and the Alps and since part of Europe and going into France all those areas um, in the mountains in the snow and Switzerland those kind of areas and also in Scandinavia Krampus has been linked to hell the goddess of the underworld as well so most cultures would have had this kind of wild deity this world energy and in pre-christian times these were the hidden ones these were the ones that were the guardians of nature which had a duality as nature does so there is the beautiful energy and there's also the dark energy and of course at midwinter we're celebrating the darker energy in another episode most likely on my youtube channel we're going to be talking about the perkton and uh, Frau Perkta or Berkta. And this is an ancient goddess and ancient beings, the Perkton being ancient beings, which are most likely the pre runners to Krampus. And these are the nature spirits that could be wild and protective and hidden and beautiful, or that they could be appearing as more malevolent, more horrific, more terrifying, again, representing the duality of life and also representing the fact that divine justice you know sometimes people can be absolute nitwits and (laughs) and more than nitwits and that these things need to be held into balance all my podcasts and videos are about this that balance is so important our scales are tipped too far in the um in the light i don't mean to be evil i don't mean that but i mean we're kind of hopping on everything that's good everything that's nice and scared to look at what lies beneath and this energy of the Perkton being dark and light is about the need for that balance, the need for dark, the need for light, and also the need to punish. You know, it's about justice. And that's something that Krampus really works with as well. If you behave badly, there has to be some responsibility. 
there has to be the sense of you cannot do that. So with these guardian spirits of the Perkton, there is that sense of taking responsibility for your actions. And this is how Krampus has become a being of punishment to the naughty children. But more about the Perkton and Perkta in my next video, I think. But let's have a look and see how these ancient nature spirits, beings of the wild, the hidden ones, the wild ones, became Krampus that we see today, running around with birch twigs, spanking children and causing chaos in the streets before uh, the celebration of St. Nicholas. So we've spoken a bit about justice and about the, the wildness in the dark times of the year and a little bit like in Samhain when people donned the outfits of animals and spirits to chase the bad spirits away. This is also the energy of um, the Krampus run which is where the local often men dress up as Krampus. Some of them dress up as really hideous crazy Krampus, Krampuses, Krampi, <laughs> like the word Krampi it could be and some of them dress up as the more mischievous and playful energy of Krampus. But they all run riot in the streets on Krampus night. And they will maybe scare the children or um, just go crazy. And I think we all need that outlet for that wilder side of ourselves. Again, balance. So yes, it's about um, punishment and you know, if you've been naughty, then you know that Krampus is going to come and get you. But it's also, I feel, about allowing the wildness within to be fired up and to be expressed. Of course, this is also about chasing away those bad spirits or confusing the bad spirits, as we spoke about in the Samhain episodes. Um, but also, um, Krampus would sometimes go around people's houses giving out presents. And so there's, there is the rewards with Krampus as well as the punishment, especially as we get to the older versions of Krampus. Well, the Perkton, these creatures that would both terrify and also bless people. Because maybe before they were demonised, they may have been more like nature spirits more like the wild animals rather than as such distorted monsters though i'm sure there was the need in winter time to express the darkness and the chaos of the time so they both brought presents and also you know punished naughty children this also goes into legends of around this time about how you should keep your house and how you should be celebrating certain pagan feasts but that is for another episode. It, I think it was probably pretty hard to get rid of this deep tradition of people to do the Krampus run or it wouldn't have been called that, maybe the Perkton run or whatever it was called. It would have been really hard to get people to stop and take on Christianity. And alike in the UK where um, churches are, built, are built where old pagan burial grounds are, like the yew, the yew groves, these ancient yew groves, are usually, haha, usually, there before the churches. The initial um, Christians, they did incorporate some pagan elements into their churches. Hence, you'll see the green man and the sheen and the gig, sheen and the gig, sorry, um, carvings and dragons, etc., carved into really old churches. And yes, they were. They were built near or by where people gathered for pagan rituals because it's integration rather than initially just wiping out a whole belief system. It would have been a period of integration before a lot of pagan beliefs were taken into the Christian celebrations, such as Christmas trees and plenty of aspects of paganism is, is clear in, in Catholicism and Christianity. So I'm imagining that while people running around the streets, <laughs> you know, really causing chaos and mischief may not have been seen as a desirable thing to have when you're bringing your new religion to town and when you're kind of bringing a different energy, a different religion around. So I 
feel that possibly they tried to ban all of this. But you can't weed out all of paganism, especially when it's so deep rooted. And so what seems to have happened, as you see from pictures and postcards and stories, is that this creature called Krampus has been um, paired up in that, as I mentioned, good cop, bad cop duo with St. Nicholas or with Santa Claus, Father Claus. So you have that duo there where St. Nick's the good guy. So basically any positive aspect of these nature spirits has been taken on by St. Nicholas and the negative aspects of this being has been taken on by Krampus and also potentially distorted so that the, the bad parts were really hideous so that, yes, Krampus survived but became something very polarised and not the full energy of what Krampus could be and then the images and the depictions uh, he's like the, the devil you know he's like the, how the devil is is depicted um, and a lot of the images of how the devil is depicted is linked to um, pagan gods as mentioned like Pan and like uh, Satyrs and like Kanunos these horned beings that were deities of life were turned into devils and so in this way instead of kind of being arch enemies Saint Nick and Krampus were kind of going out on the town and uh, doing a double team really punishing and rewarding and um, the devil had sorry the devil uh, Krampus had chains around him alike to the devil card in the tarot where you see these chains and yes um, the chains representing um, kind of the imprisonment and the, maybe also the sense of punishment also maybe that Krampus was now in um, the hands of the church and was kind of the, the creature owned by the church maybe and also the chains with the devil is also being chained to uh, chained to the, the worst parts of life well is it the worst <laughs> chained to the more carnal parts of life which are definitely not the worst parts of life, but if are done in excess, can be seen as the worst parts of life. So this is why it's very strange to sort of people to see Krampus, because then there's some weird postcards and images that come up of him being generally quite perverted in that cheeky way. And maybe that's because we need to express our wild side. And if we hold it back, it all gets a little bit strange and kind of strange perverted slightly gross or sexualized images or of, of Krampus in that devilish way especially around Victorian times and just after so I feel like Krampus does represent the need to rep to connect with our wild side our dark side and our animalistic natures and not people do get scared of those ideas this is not scary what is scary is when we don't what is scary is when it goes in and it comes out in a really negative and nasty way and it twists and turns we need balance in our life as i'm always saying we need the dark and we need the light and krampus represents a part of us that has been maybe chained has been pushed down and is needed to be expressed so i like the fact that krampus is made you know an impact and an impression on our modern mind and i hope that this resurgence of interest in krampus can help us to tune in to some deeper and wilder aspects of this time of year some things that would have felt more natural to our ancestors who lived more at one with nature who lived with the winter trees and the deep dark earth so i hope that this feeling of connecting with the deeper spirits of winter and Christmas will inspire you to reflect at this time of year, to reflect on your inner world, to reflect on your shadow, to reflect on the dark within and without. And then we can truly witness the rebirth of the sun. Because we are coming into a new solar year, we really want to clear um, anything we don't want in our lives, any negative traits, any issues that have been holding us back, any 
uh, shadow that comes up and can kind of drag us down sometimes, maybe a little bit like Krampus and his chains. Maybe it's um, sort of behavioural patterns or addictions of some kind. And it's a great time of year to look at those and to work on releasing them so that when the sun is reborn and we head towards the new year and the new light and the growing light, then we can do so clean and clear as we go into a time of purification and new energy. So I love everything about this time of year. Um, I love the sparkly lights, the jollity, jollity, that's not a word, the jovialness of this time of year. And I love that the, the message of this time of year is goodwill to all. And remember that Krampus only punished those who were unworthy, who were naughty. This is not celebrating the bad in life, it's encouraging the good. So this is a time of year to focus on being kind, on being good, when everything out there is a little bit dark and a little bit, uh, you know, wintry. It's good to to really ignite the spark of kindness and love in our hearts and to enjoy the brightness, the celebrations and the magic of Christmas. But let us not forget the shadow the shadows that run in the woods, the wild part of ourselves and the wild parts of nature that are really begging to be paid attention to this time of year. And we don't want to get to Christmas Eve and find that we've been naughty and that all we get is some coal in our stockings and a, a spanking from some birch trees. Or worse, you never know what Krampus is capable of. So I hope you enjoyed this little insight into Krampus and into the more pagan history and traditions of Christmas and Yule and some of my thoughts about them. Obviously, a lot of this is my opinions and my thoughts about why certain myths and legends are how they are. There's lots more Yule videos and podcasts to come as we head towards the end of the year. So please subscribe to my podcast and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I look forward to sharing more magic with you. If you know of any facts about Krampus or about the goddesses and gods and folklore of this time of the year, please do share it with me. I would love to hear your thoughts and your discoveries. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening. Take care. Bye.